Welcome back to Tech360.tv and some of you were asking me for the S5 video, the Panasonic S5 video, whether, how would it perform in low light? Right now, I have the S5 Mark II and it has some new advances. Part of them is new phase detection autofocus and it's night, we've got a car, let's do some shoots. So first off, if you haven't watched my review on the original S5, do give that a watch as I went through all of its pros and cons while also diving quite deep into Panasonic's V-Log or how it could actually be better than a Sony mirrorless. But in light of taking this review up a notch and unlike the original S5 review where I had ample time with it, I only had a few days with this S5 Mark II. So what's new? Or in other words, what has improved? Well, to give you some bullet points at the beginning of this video for you to make, well, your own fair judgment to follow along in what I'll be going through, which are the fact that it now shoots 10-bit in all resolutions, including SNQ mode, which goes up to 180 FPS in full HD. A newly implemented 6K up to 25 frames per second in both 3 by 2 and 17 by 9 aspect ratios, a newer processor and a 24.2 megapixel image sensor, which Panasonic suggests will do better in low light and also to help its new phase hybrid autofocus. And yes, it's been something I've personally been looking forward to the most in Panasonic cameras ever since I experienced the GH6 sometime last year. Oh, and yes, a new built-in van which I'll touch on a bit in a later part of this video. While Panasonic cameras have ceaselessly, I hope I'm saying that right, impressed me with their video priority functions over and over again, their biggest flaw to me always had something to do with their autofocus, which previously were using contrast-based autofocus. And if you happen to watch my full review of the original S5, where I profusely mentioned how contrast autofocus is just not suitable for moving subjects due to the fact they are far cheaper to manufacture for one which were also the reason why Lumix cameras were a bargain compared to other full frame cameras out there on the market. So did these new features affect the price too? Well, good news, it's still under 2000 US dollars which puts it at an insanely competitive price among other mirrorless cameras such as the Sony E7 IV or S3 and evens the playing field while giving a little more when it comes to Blackmagic pocket cinema cameras. But of course, Blackmagic's and Sony Alpha series are in a league of their own, but in a profound and meta way of saying things, so is this Mark II, this S5 Mark II. Because there's just something about having video essentials like shutter angle options, anamorphic lens functions, and not to mention Panasonic's L-mount lenses which are now sort of doing things at a more collaborative level with Sigma, Leica and to some extent even DJI. So I don't know about you but I'm very curious to see how this type of assemble initiative would even look like.
assemble. So another great thing that Panasonic cameras do mostly the best at is stabilization. And the iBiz inside Panasonic cameras have a whole other aspect to them, which I just can't explain because I just don't fully understand them either. Essentially, you are still getting really, really great stabilization. So uh, I'm just gonna take a bit of footage of something here. This is with no stabilization. This is completely off. So yeah, it's kind of it's kind of jittery because my hands are very just very very shaky and yeah, I'm shooting vlog currently because I just want that extra dynamic range. Now switching to operation mode to normal and right away it's just much more stable. And if you want to take things up a notch, there's e stabilization. And when you turn that on, it does have a bit of a, that crop, but you're really, it really just looks like it's set up on the tripod. So really great stabilization. I have been cheating for most of, of the part of this video. I had it on a gimbal, but there you go. Bit of an example of how it is to use the S5 or S5 Mark II handheld. I did, however, make the mistake of leaving stabilization on when I had this on the DJI RS3 Mini which I'll be making a separate review coming to this channel very, very soon. So yes, stay tuned for this. Another reason why I find Panasonic cameras to be just a breeze to use is how users at varying experience levels could easily navigate and understand its menu systems and base specifications. After using Sony's for a good amount of years, I. I still have troubles remembering where some of its settings are buried under or what base level ISOs I should be using for different picture profiles. The Sony A7S III for instance has dual ISOs like most cameras do but there's nothing inside the camera that suggests its second base ISO of 12,800 stated anywhere. It takes more of a learning curve to learn about its quirks while this S5 Mark II simply categorizes as auto, low, or high and ranges all the way up to 51,200 ISO and even expandable up to 204,800 ISO. It's also set to default at its second base ISO of 640 when shooting in V-Log, just like how Sony sets theirs at 800 if shooting in S-Log. But as I've mentioned before in the original S5 video, it really takes an eye to grade S-Log footage where V-Log gives you more a bit of headroom to fix over or under exposures while also just having one of the best color science that feels more film centric. Although I'd still give Canon's color science to be more accurate among the rest, if you're looking for a specific look that other cameras just don't have at this price point, it gets harder to make the argument. So part of the main new features has definitely been the autofocus and part of which has moved from contrast autofocus to phase detection autofocus, which is something that all of us has wanted in Lumix cameras. So I'm glad they finally addressed that issue. And from this instance right now, it's locking onto my face and I flawlessly. And I'm glad they finally did this because my last experience with the S5, as I dressed in that video, it was something that I wished they did, which was a video priority, which is like autofocus. And these cameras were made to do videos anyway, so I would say, I would carefully say like the S5 Mark II has, has become its perfect version. But don't quote me on that. Ergonomics 2 just feels far better in my hand, having all of your essentials at an efficient reach, such as your ISOs, white balance, joystick placement, a very responsive three inch touchscreen, a scroll wheel, primary and secondary dials, focus servo options placed directly under the EVF, which Panasonic also mentions has some improvements from two 1300K or so dots to now 3680 dots. 
It also now comes with a full HDMI from a finicky micro HDMI. So yeah, the little things always matter. So one of the things that the S5 Mark II came, but the original S5 didn't, is a fan. And it's, if you can see like this small grills at the top part here near the EVF, kind of like how Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras have come with the fan too now. And it's built on top of the sensor. Um, this does promote better heat management and Okay, I'm gonna try my best not to drop this. I don't have extra tripods But yeah, I do believe that it will help in heat management and Also the fact that it does come with 6k so unlimited recording could be a, Taking a good advantage of that, but my main concern was weather proofing or weather resistance I did ask Panasonic themselves and they did say that it is weather resistant but I'm not entirely convinced. <laughs> I would love to test it out in the rain, but I don't think so. I want to be doing that in this video. I have a very, very short period with this camera, and yeah, S5 Mark II now comes with the fan. So even if you don't find any of this appealing enough to you, Panasonic is also releasing an S5 Mark II X, which would come with ProRes, Faster reading speeds in cinema 4K, 4K and 3.3K up to 800 megabits per second and full HD at 200 megabits per second. At this point, Sony's do have more of an advantage when it comes to reading speeds for accepting CF Express Type A cards, while this only accepts UHS-2 SDXC cards, to which I have no complaints over. I'll take slower reading speeds than overpriced memory cards any day. Battery life is still pretty much the same as before with these BLF19 batteries which still manage for me to get up to three hours of on and off use. So yes, I'm very aware at this point I may sound like a Panasonic fanboy but I'll counter that by saying every brand has their strong suits. Sony's and their countless autofocus subject detection modes Canons and their color accuracy, Blackmagic with their inability to actually be pocketable, Nikon and Leica for being a photographer staple that prefer something more direct while carrying some of that heritage of yesteryears, and many other camera manufacturers that either have exploded the content creator narrative or imploded in their own ego for not wanting to evolve with the times. In the case of the Panasonic S5 or this S5 Mark II, may not sound or look like the perfect camera nor should it ever be because there's no such thing as perfect anything. But to me, it feels like it represents the unsung heroes the gaffers, the art directors, our video editor who edits these videos and ultimately the person behind the camera. Whether you're a professional or just someone who enjoys making videos, I believe this S5 Mark II would be enjoyed by many just as I have. Question is, would I want it to be my daily driver? All right, so what are my final thoughts about this camera? I have already fallen in love with the original S5 and this Mark II definitely has perfected it itself from what it was missing in the previous model. The phase out of focus, I wouldn't say it's superior to Sony's hybrid phase out of focus, but it's very, very close. And I am very much having a hard time going back to my Sony because just holding this in my hands and holding that camera in my hand, I really feel like there's a huge difference in the way it's just built for video or cinematographers. That's the whole bulk of what I do, which is shooting video and just having that extra mile that this camera does just makes it feel like it's worth the price. And it's much cheaper than a Sony a7 IV. I don't know, there's so much to talk about this camera, which I just cannot fit in this video. Would I completely sell off my Sony and move on to L-mounts and Lumix cameras? I still don't know because 
I think I just need more time with these cameras. And just for this review itself, I only had like a few days. So yeah, that's that. But yeah, that's my full review of the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section down below. I'll try to get through some of your questions if you have any. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.